Yeah, we're walking into my wildlife refuge. <laughs> and I hope he's still there. It looks like he's still there. Check this out. some kind of skeleton. Well, wow. yeah, black bears, birds don't need. But I don't find it for the birds anyway. Man, there's tons of mint. Kill myself here. <laughs> What's that? Grasshopper. There we go. There he is. It's a Amazon dianthus. They're perennial. Start blooming. I bet they're building a nest right there. Philadelphia's starting to bloom. Looks like the fig made it. And wild strawberries. Oh yeah. Mimosa tree. And you got your native columbine over there blooming. Another good plant for hummingbirds. And ants protecting scale. They're probably collecting honeydew from the scale. That's why this creek myrtle was free when I worked there. Because <laughs> it has scale. But I'm not worried about it. Bugs are part of the environment. Everything eats something and something gets eaten. It's part of the circle of life. So here's my own pers personal nature center. <laughs> Got rid of Becky coming back. And wild wood violets I dug up at the Plano store when I worked there. Got lilies coming up. And butterfly bush. That was a four inch pot five years ago. Liar leaf salvia. Chrysanthemum, the 
extremely invasive native plant. Oh, <laughs> I think it's Phytostegia or obedient plant. The only thing obedient about it is its flowers. Because they stay in place when you move them. And then the plant I probably shouldn't have planted. Yeah. Trumpet vine. It was supposed to be one that stayed in place. I knew better. <laughs> I don't think that exists. Anyway, hope y'all enjoy this. I know I have. At some point I'm going to have to clean it up back here. But, you know, I've been saying that for two years. Then here's uh, my Palace Castle Artemisia. Uh, it's very prolific. Didn't even freeze. Of course, it is kind of protected back here. And there's a knockout rose that was uh, still in a pot. Probably rooted through the bottom. But because they get a rosette up here, I didn't want to put it in the ground. We got oregano, carnations, spearmint, and some uh, California wildflowers, and some poppies. It came up from seed from last year. That's your garvinias, which is a hybrid Gerber daisy. And you got your native uh, hibiscus uh, with the pink flowers. It's a type of pavonia, I don't remember. And the caliber coat came back. And it went down to nothing but sticks, but it came back. And I got a peony coming up there. More poppies, more wood violets, and that's a nectarina plant from a seed oh five years, five six years ago. And Salvia Gregia, the purple, it came out a couple years ago. It came back. We've got some borage that came back from seed. And melissum that came back from seed, unless it's not a melissum, it's the other one that I can't remember the name of. Got some dianthus that came back. That's that uh, kaleidoscope uh, abelia. And you got uh, some verbena, homestead verbena. And uh, scabiosa or pincushion flower. My antenna starting to come back. This is a pink one. This one is a volunteer. And you got the green cloud sage. Whoever decided to put this in front of the house was stupid. They get eight feet tall, but. I've been hacking the living daylights out of it, keeping it small. And you got your uh, Japanese plant there, the uh, Clara Indian Hawthorn. At least I believe it's Japanese. That's another abelia. I think it's one of the, I mean, it might be Twist of Lime. I don't remember the name of it. It's, it's got Lime in the name. And you got your. Uh, Kale, watermelon kale, it's starting to flower. And I didn't plant these, these came up from seed from last year. And I'm trying to make them seed again, unless the stupid HOA thinks that they're a weed, which they're not. I think this is a weed, that's not a weed. That's a, no, it's got weeds mixed in it, but the weeds that are mixed in it are native. A type of morning glory. Really hard to keep that stuff at bay, especially when it's been raining like this. But uh, that's uh, what they call a uh, licorice plant. I, I don't know what it's licorice plant. I know what it is. Uh, curry plant. Because it smells like curry. It's supposed to repel moths. And if I'm real careful, I'm probably get some film of these honeybees pollinating the flowers. The uh, chartreuse colored flower there, that's, uh, or rather, it's not, well, it's a plant. And it does flower, but it doesn't flower a lot. That's Creeping Jenny. Or Lissamachia, I believe that's right. And we've got this cool thing. This is, uh, I kept this alive last year. 
and bought it right before I got canned. It's the, uh, what is that called? Oh, Penstemon. It's a type of Penstemon hybrid. Good hummingbird plant. Some Argarvinias. Dianthus. Dianthus does really well up here. More Garvinias. It's a little thing called wire vine. It's supposed to be a house plant, but it's doing fine in my yard. We you got your Hedera helix. Two, several varieties of. It's called uh, English ivy. Those little seedlings are balsam. It's a type of impatient. They get about four foot tall. Everything's starting to come back. Doesn't look perfect yet, but it will. More carnations. Can't get it to focus. There we go. Get some uh, peach colored ones there, apricot colored. You got a primrose that came back, kind of shocked about that, but I guess it'd be more perennial here than they would in Houston, and it's a salvia, don't remember which one, we got tons of crown vetch coming up here, it's a good plant for fixing nitrogen, the only problem is it just takes over the world, and that's my neighbor's, uh, Artemisia, that's what's known as Dusty Miller, it's doing really well. And I guess that's going to be it for this video. Y'all have a great day and stay safe and stay healthy.